we've been talking a lot about heaven. I didn't even know that one month has already passed. We have two more services before the year, before the month runs out. And the year is just, the year is moving at, at lightning speed. Praise the Lord. Those of you who are not married yet, this year is almost over. What are you doing? Who said it's too late? Even, even my own record was to break. I mean, this is a tough call. But if you are overseas, it can happen. Because every, because every rule gets broken if you are coming from overseas. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, um, God is good to us. I know God is good to us because some of the things that we are talking about here are, 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 are surprisingly new to some other persons. And it doesn't make us extraordinary. It's just a product of grace. Do you understand what I'm saying? The grace of God that has found us worthy to be learning the things that we are learning right now. I'm not just learning them, to be internalizing them and be and be prioritizing them in our minds. And I hope we all are taking time to think about these things and not waiting for the meeting days. I hope we all are because God wants to give us unique experiences in this season. So I hope we all are taking time to look up these things. Um, um, yes, so... I have a specific word from God for some of us here tonight. The first one that comes into my mind as I remember them is that we should go and dig up trenches. We should go and dig up trenches, dig up trenches. If you cannot dig, make reservoir. Dig up trenches. If you cannot dig, make reservoir. No trenches is in the ground. Reservoir doesn't have to be in the ground. You can build on the ground. Most important thing is just create space. Because rain is about to fall. And, and when rain falls, only those who have containers will benefit from it, number one. Number two, the size of your container is directly proportional to how much you're going to be able to, to, to store. And because in the story of the woman who was given the opportunity to get jars, it was the amount of jazz she got that determined the amount of oil she got eventually. Do you understand what I'm saying? God was going to do a miracle through the prophet, but there was also a responsibility she had to carry out. Borrow as many jars as possible. If she was beginning to get funny and say, you know, let's just be, let's just, uh, that's all the money she will get. So, and it's, 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 a, it's a spiritual principle too that god is going to pour out oil but we have to create enough room for the oil and so some of us god is going to pour out oil we 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 are in our minds restricting the areas of our lives that this oil is going to be useful do you hear what i just said now do you hear what i just said in our minds we have told ourselves mm, maybe it's only for church work you know what, what we do in church I have never imagined that oil will only just be for church work. Do you understand what I'm saying? I've never because I have and I've seen the hand of God, I've seen the anointing of God at work in other areas of my life, other than service in church. I have seen God inspire me with ideas that um and some of these ideas are not even certain now. Some of them I know that they cannot happen now. Some of them are set in the future, if the Lord allows me to continue to live. And some of them are not even for me. So I want to beg you, allow God invade other areas of your life so that you will not have to struggle unnecessarily. Praise the Lord. The second thing I want to say is that there are, there are some of us here who are desirous of the ability to to um, to teach the word of God, it's a good desire, and the Lord wants me to tell you 
that is not by power or by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So there are people who are very good at studying scripture, but they don't have insight into scripture because it is not given to them. Do you hear what I just said now? It's not what? It's not what? It has to be given. So and I'm not talking about personal Bible study. I'm talking about you being able to acquire enough insight to be able to um, share with other people. You know, so the Lord wants to do this because he wants to make more popular the things that he's sharing with us. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. So, and you know, like I've said, like I've said, we have a brand of our, of our doctrine. And I'm not hiding it. I'm not, I'm not going to... We have, and I'm being deliberate. We are word of Christ preachers. Word of Christ. The word of Christ. Uh, Romans 10, verse uh, what now? Faith comes by hearing. Romans 10, what? It, it doesn't matter. It's like Romans 10. You can find it. The point is that you know the words. Don't kill yourself. Praise the Lord. It's Romans 10, 10. Eh? It's not Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17, not 7. So it says, uh, you know what it says? So faith comes from sharing. Faith comes from sharing. Faith comes from sharing. Faith comes from sharing. Sharing what? So let's open other versions now. Amplified message, King James. And I want to lay this to rest. So that there's no, I don't want to I don't want anybody to come and ask me any how does faith come? Faith does not come by just hearing anything. Faith comes by hearing. No, leave it at NLT. Faith, genuine faith, the kind of faith that preserves people unto salvation, the kind of faith that locks their hope in eternal life does not come by just hearing everything that people say. Do you hear what I said? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? The verse is specific about what you hear that will produce the kind of faith that is consistent with salvation. Genuine one. Do you understand what I'm saying? The kind of faith that Jesus spoke of in John 3 when he says, anyone believing in me. Are we together? Hey, that's the kind of faith I'm talking about. I'm not talking about faith for money. The faith that produces salvation, which is what Romans 10 is talking about, not faith for money. Listen to what I'm saying. This faith is not faith for money. And I'm repeating it now because I want some people to hear. This faith in Romans 10 is not faith for money. It is faith for salvation. Do you hear what I'm saying? Hey, let them take my video and crop it. Anyhow, they want to crop it. That's why I'm repeating it. Why I'm repeating it. It's not faith for money. It is faith for salvation. And this faith comes from sharing. What are you hearing that produces that kind of faith? The good news about Christ. Not the good news about a man. I'm not going to sit down here and start telling you about one man that God used. That if your faith is sprung up by hearing about that man, that your faith is based on that man. Do you understand? And it will not save you. Praise the Lord. Amplified. What does Amplified say? Is there anybody have it here? So faith comes from hearing what is told. Does it stop there? And what is heard comes by the preaching of the message that came from the lips. Listen, no. That you, that you I don't know where it's on. This one is saying, of the, comes by sharing of the message that came from the lips of Christ, the Messiah himself. What Paul has done with this uh, version is to say, my epistles are important, but you have got to go and share the words that come from the mouth of Jesus himself. I didn't say it. This is what is written here. Are we together? Are we together? Yeah. Any other version, quickly? Any other version? No one can have faith without hearing the message about Christ. The message about Christ. 
Not every message out there is about Christ. And I'm telling you so that you can have your discernment antenna up. Do you understand what I'm saying? People just use the word message. Do you hear the message? It's not just the message. It's the message about Christ. That is the word of Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even, even, uh, even if you go back... Um, If you go back, if you go back um, to verse 8, in fact, it says the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your mouth. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. So, why should say, no, go back, go, you show, uh, show me King James. Uh, fantastic. But what said it? The word is near thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. What is the word of faith? The word of faith is not in itself just word of faith. The word of faith actually is the message of Christ. If it's not the message of Christ, it is pointless. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that money should come, that car should come, do you understand what I'm saying? Go ask those who are in Afghanistan. If you if they sold the message of money and cars to Afghanistan Christians, they're going to be bankrupt right now because they will doubt everything they've heard. Do you understand what I'm saying? That if you confess that the, Jesus, the Lord Jesus, that is what you confess, Jesus. If you believe in their heart that God will give you a car, no, that Je- that God raised it. Who? Him, Jesus from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. It is faith for salvation. And that faith for salvation is faith based on the message of, about Christ. Of, about, from, in Christ. Not faith for money. We don't need faith to make money. I keep saying it. We don't need to believe in God to make money. Anybody can make money in this world. It's just us to be a Christian. Is he a Christian? I bet, I bet some of us dreamed to live the kind of life we was living. Until we found out how we got the money. And just, it just shows you one thing. It just shows you one thing. People don't splash money the way splashing money and it's legitimate. Go on around the world over. People don't splash money the way horse people splashing money and the money is legitimate. You must show how you make the money. Even um, uh, Floyd Mayweather, don't you know how he makes money? He gets punched to make money now. <laughs> he gives and, and receives punches to make money. Many times. Do you know how many hours Lionel Messi spends in, in practice before he became Lionel Messi? They have been playing football since they were a child. They were children. You just show up out of nowhere and you begin to splash money everywhere and it's not stolen. It's stolen. There are three ways you can make money in this world like that. You're like a Nigerian politician. Or African politician. <laughs> or African, that is by extension. <laughs> or you're a Yahoo boy. Or you're a drug peddler. That's number three. Another way. Hey, you know. People Before. Have you seen people that are not like gas? Kind of way, the way they walk. Yeah. Even those who own the companies, they are workaholics themselves. I, and I met them. They are workaholics. It's not because they have oil, they're going to sit down on their hands. They will bunker all the oil away from their rig. They won't, they won't make any money. <laughs> even, even, even those who have bunker is work. Praise the Lord. Even I don't support what they are doing because it's, it's, it's useless work. Just die anyhow. Open your Bible with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Tonight I want to talk about the better life. Not 15 years out. <laughs> no, <what>? so <laughs> it just clicked. Okay, but, 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 but how many years ago was it the better life? Because right now, the future 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 cannot buy egg roll again. It's so bad. I gave. I gave a beggar. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
I gave a beggar 50 bucks. That's the way he looked at me like. I, so I might, that's, it's not better life again. It's worse life. Hebrews 11 verse 16. What does it say? Oh, and let, let us start from there. Um, I, I just, I mean, what I just said now, when you say better life, what comes to your mind? 15 era, right? No, it's not 15 era. Better life. Be, better life. Better life for most of us is Canada and the uh, UK. Right? Yes, so $100, that's 50K. That's, that's kind of money some people were pulling out. No, that's how money some people were pulling out last weekend. $100, they're just pulling $100 out in the bus, in that video that is circulating online. Of the, this, this, why is that, just pulling $100, $100 notes. Only that bills that Americans don't spend. If an American puts up a hundred dollar bill at the bar, they're gonna question you. Like, where do you get this kind of money from? They won't collect it because for them, number one, it's strange money to spend on the streets. That's the kind of money you see Nigerians blowing around. So, um, but they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. So, so we see here that. The author says, better place. Place. And mark that word place. Some other, country, some other version will say, better country. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, and it doesn't just stop there. It adds an emphasis. A heavenly homeland. Another one says, a heavenly one. So, better place from this person's perspective is heaven. No, from this verse, because the same person is talking about so far. <laughs> from this verse, is better place is what? Heaven. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the word better means fundamentally um, some, a more desirable thing. So if you replace better place here, if you be better with more desirable, we are looking for a more desirable place. Are, are we together? And it pegs the location here as heaven. Do we all agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Now, fast forward to Hebrews 11 verse 35. Hebrews 11 verse 35. Fast forward to verse 35. In verse 35, in fact, we cannot read 35 just like that. We, everything is fake in this town. Even the Bible is fake. He's staring. Right, Hebrews 11, verse 32. We're going to read 32 35 because there's, there's it has been saying many things, particularly about Abraham, Moses, Joseph, Isaac. You know, Moses took a lot of time, and then he gets to Rahab, he gives Rahab one verse, and then he goes to verse 32, and then he changes his tone slightly. How much more do I need to say? It will take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah. Many of us don't even know Jephthah. Many, many, many of us don't even know the guy, but I mean, he's a great, great guy. <laughs> David, Samuel, and then he adds all the prophets. He summarizes everything, right? Elijah, Elijah, yeah, everybody. Jeremiah, Jeremiah Isaiah, Isaiah, Habakkuk, Malachi, Isaiah, you know, well, you know, Uziah, Tunji, Uziah. you know. <laughs> that cannot be prophets. Because that, if, the meaning of that name, I said, doesn't suggest to be prophet. <laughs> 33. <laughs> no. By faith, listen, you know, by faith, these people overthrew kingdoms ruled with justice and received what God had promised them. Even though in Tassana he says they didn't, they didn't receive it again. Anyways. They shot the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. By what? By faith, by faith right? Yeah. Their weaknesses were turned to strength by faith. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight by faith. Verse 35. Listen now. Women received their loved ones back from the dead by faith. Right? But, that is, 
Can you see? He now is full stop there. He now starts the next sentence. What? But all we've been reading so far has been sounding very nice. That is the kind of thing that faith should produce, right? So, so if, if I if I was a prosperity preacher right now, this is all the things I will tell you, and I will stop. I cannot go beyond this full stop because faith cannot do anything other than this, right? Do you know what I'm saying? He says, but. Others were tortured. By faith. You <laughs> Who gets tortured by faith? What kind of faith is that producing? Your faith should produce positive results. Is that what is that you hear? Right? But their own faith. How unfortunate. The, it, it, it is from the perspective of those people it is unfortunate for your own faith to produce torturing that cannot be faith that is you not being wise <laughs> okay refusing to turn from God in order to be set free you, 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 know, you know you know what you, you, leave what is left here John 36 John 36 John 36 leave the rest of 35 alone first somewhere jerry that you know what it means to be jerry that you know what I'm saying by faith right and their backs were cut open with whips. My face. <laughs> Others were chained in prison. Others were chained in prison. Men like Daniel, right? Daniel ended up in the lion's den. Right? The same Daniel that saw all those things I was seeing. Um, let's go on. There's seven. Some died by stoning. By no, no, no. Wait, before you mention Stephen, don't me- this. I'm, I'm going to share something with you guys very soon. Paul and Co. didn't tie into this list, and I will show you. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half. Others were killed with the sword. In fact, I I, I found some materials in a in a in a in a in a book that did not make the canon. The book of Maccabees. It's it's one of those books that details out the persecution of the of Israel when they were overtake when they were overtaken by one horrible king like that. You know, it's bad. It was bad. Slot children were hung. In fact, I read the manuscripts online and I could not imagine that this person was this detailed about things that happened to Jewish people. You know, some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. All of these things by faith. Verse 38 They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains. People that are too good for this world end up on mountains and deserts, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. But I thought they should be worshipped. So that's the perspective of where I'm picking the lines I'm about to say to you next from. So slide back to 35. Earlier on, we saw in verse um, 16, it talks about a better place, right? In 35, it says, but others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. Full stop. They placed their faith. Is that what it says? No, this is not faith now. It was by faith they refused to turn from God in order to be set free. But there was something that was producing that faith. And that's what you need to understand. Which is what we read in Colossians chapter 1. When Paul was saying, I've heard about your faith in God and your love for brethren. This as a result of your hope in what, what is stored for you in heaven. Do you understand what I'm saying? In fact, that's the same way First Peter opens uh, Peter opens his letter in First Peter. If you go to First Peter chapter one, 
Um, the same thing in Colossians, in verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that you have been born again, because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, we live in great expectation, and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you. The same words that Paul was using in Colossians, right? Pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. Verse 5. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this, this, meaning, what? It says this salvation. Peter likens the great inheritance to salvation. And it says that your faith is the instrument which God is using to keep you ahead of what is coming. So, every time you talk about faith, you must put in perspective what is coming. If not, that faith is invalid. It will only be useful for getting money and cars. But when discomfort comes, that faith becomes useless. Because the only reason why these people in Hebrews chapter 11 allow themselves to remain in chains and not be set free, it was because they place their hope go back now in a better life not better place now not 16 is better place now the same person in the same chapter is saying they place their hope in a better life after the resurrection so it's the same context that one says a better place heaven this one better life after resurrection. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's always very clear that I'm not talking about better life or better place here. It's very clear. Better place first is what? Heaven. Better life after is not anything here. Yes. God bless you. So, um, what that means is that every time we think about people Choosing to suffer persecution and go through excruciating pain. Every time we think about it, we don't usually answer the question of why. Why do they choose to suffer in the name of God? What is their motivation? What is making them do these things? What is the reason why? And honestly, it could not be anything in this life. Because when a man is risking life, he cannot be looking forward to a reward in this life. Do you know what I just said now? When a man is risking his life, he cannot be looking forward to a reward in this life. So when a man chooses to die for something he believes in, when a man chooses to die for something he believes in, automatically the reward for his actions is set afterwards. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's set in two things. Number one, his reward is set in the conviction of the existence of a life after the one he currently is living. So anybody that is going to risk his life for anything is going to be based on, number one, the conviction that there is another life after this one. What that means is that people who don't, who are not convinced there's another life. Well, we're not talking about the quality of that life right now. Just for that there's another life. People who are not convinced about that cannot believe enough to want to live, get, uh, give up their lives for something. That's one. Then number two, it's also based on the conviction of a better life than the one which he currently has. Otherwise, he will be the most unfortunate person. When a man believes in something enough to die for it, it's based on the conviction that there is another life than the one he is living. It's also based on the conviction that the life that he is coming is a better one than the one he currently has. Else, if all he will get is just the current life he is living, then is a waste of time. You should just continue living the one I currently has. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and, and that's why when, when um, some of the worst people on earth, suicide bombers, they are one of the worst people on earth. When we think about them, of course, what's associated with them is contempt. Even people in their religion think of, think of them with contempt. Because it doesn't make sense of how a man can go and set off a bomb in the middle of the streets and kill people of his religion in the, in, in, in the pursuit of, of a religious cause. Do you understand what I'm saying? It makes no sense. And what they are doing is based on pure hatred. Do you understand what I'm saying? Their actions is based on what? Pure hatred. Pure hatred. That's, that's, you, you gotta hate people so much to want to blow up yourself to kill them. Do you know what I said? You gotta hate people. Someone has to want to feed you with so much hate in your heart for you to want to go and blow up yourself to kill other people. But when we look at them with so much contempt, we also need to ask ourselves a question. Can pure love motivate us to die for someone else? They commit suicide and kill other people because of hatred. Can pure love move us to let go of our own comfort? I'm not talking about death. Just comfort. You know death is a very long thing. Can pure love motivate us to embrace discomfort? You see, I see a lot of people who have a lot of doctrines about love and they can teach a lot of stuff about it. But if you want to ask who are the people that should be teaching about love the most? They are missionaries. Only missionaries understand what it means to abandon all your goals, all your personal ambitions, all your dreams, all your career goals. Most of them are bright people. Though. They're not, they're not dollars. Most of them are bright people. And they just ship themselves into one uncivilized environment because they are passionate that God wants to save some people. They are the ones that should make onto the stage to teach us about love. Not people that have never left the city in their lives. Do you understand what I'm saying? People, people who, who not even accept the MYC posting. Who not even accept the MYC posting. Because it's going to be discomfort to them. Talk about love. They don't understand what it means to sacrifice anything. Because the proof of love is sacrifice. And people are willing to kill themselves because of hatred. But those who claim that we don't hate people, we love, when they make any scum demand of you, sacrifice time to show up at charity events. I'm busy. Everybody has gone silent on me now. Because I mentioned why it's. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Can you see that's pride? That one serves you, it's not love. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, I, I told you earlier, I said, don't, don't, I told you earlier, I said, don't think of Paul and the uh, other guys because in verse 32, the Bible mentions Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jeph, Jephthah, David, Samuel, all the prophets. And then in verse 39 to 40, all these people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God had promised them. For God had promised something better in mind for us. So when he says for us, he's talking about the, the new covenant people. So you cannot mention Paul in this in this list. They, are, they don't belong here. And there's a reason why I'm emphasizing this point. Because we are speaking of people like David and Co. Who only saw Christ as a, as a mirage. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yet, the thought of a better life after resurrection 
was this real to them and i'm i'm emphasizing resurrection because these people though they could not lay a firm grip on what's coming for them after resurrection they live their lives from the perspective that there's another life when they die praise the lord and this is really striking in fact if you read actually acts uh, 2 27 there's a, there's something that peter was saying that david spoke as a prophecy about jesus christ do you understand what i'm saying but i, I right now i don't want to read as a prophecy right now i want to read it from the from the way the writer the original author paul uh, david was saying it and i want to have an i, I a little insight into what was going on in the spirit when he wrote these things i always get that he says for you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your holy one to rot in the grave so this is the prophecy about christ do you know what i'm saying but if we try to remove that uh, application as prophecy and look at it from the perspective of david writing ask yourself how a man can have such assurance that god will not abandon his soul among the dead that is the way the people of old lived their lives with the assurance that even though they were not sure but they were at least they knew enough that god was faithful not to abandon their soul among the dead how do you then ask a christian with all the assurance of christ in matthew mark luke and john that anyone believing in me though he dies will live you now ask a christian are you going to heaven you will say only god knows that person needs to be flogged <laughs> not only him his pastor too needs to be flogged <laughs> so now someone you someone you now say uh, well people can do, do whatever they like people, uh, even though people do work on them they can do they can still decide to do whatever they like so that's why i said that's why i said him first and we can say excuse the pastor praise the lord <laughs> yeah you know what i'm saying because some, some people are just some people are just <laughs> but you see <laughs> praise the lord <laughs> but, but but you know that if there was no if you if if the scenario of that person not dropping money if that scenario of him dropping money was not in the equation, no pastor would identify himself as his pastor. Let me repeat it. That person I'm talking about, if that person I mentioned that should be flogged, if he wasn't dropping money, nobody would say I'm, I'm his pastor. Because there are many people today who should be flogged. Who people, people are still claiming that I'm his pastor. Because he's dropping. <laughs> again, uh, again, it's, again, it's just a, it's just an example. I want to get that, guys. It's just an what? An example. It's not a. It's not the rule of. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I'm just saying that all of you in this room right now, if after all this my sweating in the last one month you, inside the CEO you 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 will not be able to say you are going to heaven that one is your problem now it cannot be mine because on the most serious note i i know that there, there will always be judases but God forbid that they be here. God forbid that they be here. What, what, what else do you want people to do for you again? Open church. What else? We are preaching the truth. It must be. What else? How else can a man be convinced that he's going to heaven? We will see Fisto on Saturday. We're going on tours. We're talking to people. We're engaging people. You know, we're putting out content. 
How else are we going to tell you that you're going to heaven? No, that person. I'm sorry. And, and, and honestly, nobody that cannot say that God is going to heaven can identify himself as a follower of mine. No. I, 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 would, I would denounce that person before the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I, I know him not. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, you know guys, honestly, um, honestly, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, so we're talking about serious stuff here now, right? <laughs> you know, the truth is that without hope of of something coming, without hope of a life that is far better than that which seems real to us, we cannot choose discomfort over ease, let alone death. If there is no hope of a better life than the one currently are living right now, we can't choose discomfort over ease, let alone talk about death. And you see, that's the reason why you see many believers behaving the way they are behaving. I see many believers, because I too used to behave like that once, the way we are behaving. Because there's nothing, it's all about here. And it's not all about here. What is coming is better. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I told you before, I said that, I said that where we are going, there will be no need for prophesying. All these things that are shocking us, that are making people travel all over, as far as the University States to go and see a great man of God. All those things will be useless. There will be no great man of God. We will all be brothers. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a better life. Speaking of better lives, if you go to Hebrews 8, verse 6, the Bible is talking about um, Jesus being the mediator of a, of a more superior, if I let's see, but now Jesus, our high priest, has been given a ministry that is, listen to what we have putting into, a ministry that is far superior to the old priesthood. Far superior to the old priesthood. Far superior, not just superior, far superior to the old priesthood. Meaning that everything that consisted of the old priesthood, as impressive as they are, the ministry of Jesus Christ far supersedes it. Eh? For he is the one who mediates for us a far better covenant. Can you see now? With God, based on better promises. Everything with Christ is better, 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 far superior kind of stuff. Are we together? Now, this is the definition of our life right now in the flesh as Christians. Not as unbelievers. You understand what I'm saying? From the unbelieving world into Christ is an embracing of a better life. Do you hear what I said? From the unbelieving world into Christ is a step of embracing a better covenant. Do you understand what I'm saying? That comes with better promises. Are we together? Even though it is now hard for me to believe that there are people who do know these things but still want to have elements of that inferior old priesthood and this superior priesthood of Christ. Listen, there are people who want to hold on to elements of that inferior priesthood and this superior priesthood of Christ. And it cannot work. In fact, Jesus Christ frowns, is, again, frowns at it. Let me give you an example. An example. So I'm using a, a, a 2003 model car right now. Toyota Camry. I we together. It, it cannot be a good example, but it's just, just a, a mental picture. Uh-huh. I now go and buy a 2021 Camry in Jesus' name. 
<laughs> I, I now buy 2021 Camry. I have a 2003 model Camry. I have a 2021 car. And they told me, Oga, you cannot drive those two cars on, on Nigerian roads. We can only allow you drive one of those cars. Do you understand what I'm saying? Which one would I pick? No, it makes sense to you that I should pick the 2021 model. You know, it will cost more money to service, no doubt. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> how do you how are you able to afford it in the first place? If it will suddenly be costing you more money to service. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it, it makes sense to pick that car. But you know what some somebody will now do? You say, yes, I'm picking this 2021 model. But I don't like the seat. I want the seat of the 2003 model. Because that one, it, I'm used to it. Are, are you hearing the analogy now? Do you understand what I'm saying? My back is, is used to it. I like it. <laughs> this screen in this car is too... Can you just want to bring my old radio from that one and put it inside? I'll be running my cassette radio like that. Are you hearing? This gear is too slick. Bring me the other one that I can just press and push back. And... That's exact. <laughs> That's exactly the way it is with people that take elements of the old priesthood, such as curses, yes. uh, and want to put it into Christ. So in, they've not left. And you see, what I just told you guys that, that is looking so simple is also the same barrier that will keep them from the better life coming. Because of their unwillingness to let go of now. Yes. If you don't let go of the old and embrace the new, you cannot even let go of what appears new for the better. That's the problem. Every time we are presented with better, we have to abandon good. And there's no, and that's why Christ was warning in Mark 2 12 about new wine. No, not 2 12, uh, new uh, 2 21. 1, 221, Mark 21. And that's what he was saying. There is no joining. What we have today in church is people joining, trying to join the old and the new. When Bible clearly states that cursed be anyone hung on a tree and it became a curse for us all, some people who claim to be new covenant ministers and live in new covenant life will be telling you that you are under a curse. Because Christ has suddenly become inferior in that regard. But every other area is superior. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus said, besides, who would patch old clothing with new cloths? For the new patch will shrink and rip away from the old cloth. By default, that's what he does. Leaving an even bigger tear than before. See, that's why you have people today who are in a worse place than they were before they got born again. Because they were introduced to a pseudo gospel. A pseudo gospel that tells them. I don't want to offend people. But I'll speak the truth. Praise the Lord. I'll be asked to tell the truth now. If not, they will take my own voice away. You know. You don't know. They'll take my voice if I don't speak the truth. See, the challenge for most of us is that we have not even embraced the definition of better life in the flesh now. And this life is an eternal life. A life that we have not embraced in the flesh now, we cannot embrace later. Do you know what I just said? Should I repeat it? Hmm? Many of us have not embraced the definition of of the better life now when we are in the flesh and that better life that we're talking about after resurrection actually starts now do you know what i'm saying because scripture says that we have the holy spirit who is a what a deposit guaranteeing that what god has promised us we will get it so if in this phase that we are in the flesh we are not willing to embrace in fullness the definition of better 
It's not then. We will not say, hey, when we get there, we will now accept everything. You won't even get there at all. Let alone accept anything there. The life that we're going to live, that better life, which is a life of faith, which is a life of Christ, which is a life that is willing to embrace discomfort regardless, which is a life that leads as a nomad and as a stranger, if you don't embrace it now, you are not embracing anything over there. Dicky, have I lost you? Praise the Lord. There's, there's a, there's a, there's a, in fact, <laughs> that first Peter that we read, that first Peter chapter 1, verse 2 to 5, there's a strong connection between what is coming up ahead and now. Very strong connection. And we have to embrace the better life now. Even though it is actually going to come into full effect after resurrection. Are, are we together? He says, and we have a priceless inheritance. An inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. It is there. But there's something happening right now that is connecting us to that. That's verse 5. What's what's that thing? Verse 5. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this Salvation. salvation. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and, and that's why the quality of your faith is important. The quality of your faith is very, very critical. If your faith, if your faith is based on men's wisdom, it won't guarantee God's protection by his power until you receive his salvation. It won't. That's why, eh? Do you understand what I'm saying? What you believe matters a lot. The, 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 what you heard actually matters a lot because that's how your faith is produced and if you, you produce the wrong faith because of the wrong thing you heard you, you will not be protected by his power until the salvation comes what that means therefore is that you are waiting for something that is not coming in fact most likely if your faith is bad you won't be waiting for anything at all because when the faith is bad, there's no hope. Do you understand what I'm saying? When the faith is bad, do you understand what I'm saying? You, there's no expectation of something coming. Finally, tonight, Luke 16. Um, ah. Luke 16. There's a story in Luke 16. The story starts from verse 19. We don't want to start from verse 19. It's a story of a very rich man and a very poor miserable man it's not it wasn't only poor the bible says his own poverty was another level verse 19 jesus said there was a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed in purple and fine linen and who lived each day in luxury that's how it so this rich man was an extraordinarily rich man the poor guy on the other hand at his gate lay a poor man but God knew his name. And that's, that's what's the case about the story. The rich man. But a poor man named Lazarus. So there's a name of the poor man. But the rich man doesn't have a name. But in this world, the rich man's name is forgotten. The, I mean, the, the poor man's name is forgotten. The rich man's name is remembered. So it says, lay a poor man named Lazarus. Who was covered with sores? Now the story doesn't end there. As Lazarus lay there, longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. So he wasn't just poor; he was sick. And let me tell you one fact. In fact, the the use of dog in this story is even now made the story worse because dogs are considered to be unclean animal. So. A poor person that has his sores licked by an unclean animal, his case is another level. Now, are we together? So, the summary of the story 
is that there's a contrast being done between this man, this rich man and Lazarus. Are we together? And listen, there's a reason why there's a, Christ showed the contrast of their social status on earth. There's a reason why. Because he wants, us, he wants to use it to deepen the level of improvement their life experienced when they left. That's why he painted the picture of the luxury this man was living in. Eh? So, there's a reason why Jesus Christ painted the picture of the quality of the rich man's life on earth and the quality of the poor man's life. Because, except you grasp this extent of their rich, their wealth and his poverty, you will not know the essence of improvement that happens to their lives after resurrection. Praise the Lord. So now, finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angel to sit beside Abraham at the heavenly banquet. The rich man also died and was buried. Can you see the way the story was? And was buried. The other one died, was carried by angels. The rich man died, was buried. There, in torment, he saw Abraham in a far distance with Lazarus at his side. Now, this is where I'm going to with the story. So, in shock, to me, this rich man who lived in so much affluence and carelessness saw Abraham and recognized him. And he called him Father Abraham. You see where he's in. Father Abraham. In fact, go to verse 29. After he had made a request of Abraham and Abraham had refused him, see what Abraham told him in 29. What Abraham said, Moses and the prophets have warned them. Your brothers can read, they can read what they wrote. Meaning that Abraham put this man in the category of people who had access to Moses' scroll. Because not everybody had access to it. Number one. Number two, it put him in the category of, of a man who had religious knowledge. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do, do, do you guys get my point now? Now, for him to know Abraham as father, for him to be able to be told that your brothers can read what they wrote, it means that he wasn't unaware of the reality of an afterlife. And if you did not listen in your lifetime to prophets, is it your brother that will now listen because, you're, because somebody's come from, from the dead? And when he says, send somebody, of course, you know that he's trying to say, send me. <laughs> but listen, this story is a picture of how bankrupt people will end up in the age to come because of their lack of awareness that better lies ahead. See, from, the, from this man's perspective, there is nothing better than to live in luxury and wear linen clothes on earth. And that's the lesson of that story. That there are two persons, one by virtue of misfortune, ended up at the gate of another man. The man that is rich, not that his words is what makes him a bad person. No. But his own awareness that there is a God who rewards. His own awareness that there is a man sitting at his gate every day who he should take care of. Do you understand what I'm saying? His unwillingness to be bothered to prepare for what is coming. That is where many people are today. Living in unawareness. Carelessly. Even with all the talk about heaven going on around. They don't make any investment. They don't bother to prepare they don't bother to even get an assurance. Praise the Lord. I, I don't want to be Lazarus. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I don't want to be Lazarus. I don't want to be Lazarus on earth. I, I want to be Lazarus in heaven. But I don't want to be Lazarus on earth. Do you understand what I'm saying? And why should anybody be Lazarus? Was Peter covered in sores all his life? Or was Paul covered in sores all his life? Was John covered in sores all his life? 
Oh, 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 the quality of their lives in that place. They are willing to take action. And so, there is no better life here. Do you know what I said? 20 years, America occupied Afghanistan. America and the Allies occupied Afghanistan. 20 years. In that 20 years, some people became very rich. Had the opportunity to travel over the world and do kind of things. And in a matter of weeks to months, months, the same country descended back into the hands of people that the whole world didn't want to be in the hands of. And now they are freezing everything they can freeze. They are doing all kind of things. I keep saying, COVID nineteen was a lesson to us in the world. In, in the world, I hope we learned the lesson. Or we see the ongoing lesson. But well, maybe it has for some maybe it has passed. Afghanistan is another lesson to everybody that all what you think is comfort right now can descend into the hands of of, of, of people that you didn't expect it to descend into. The same UK that we are all mad about going to can descend into the hands of extremists. It's not impossible. Guys, I'm telling you, it is not impossible. The, those people who are who are those Boko Haram people, they are work, they, were, they have been working with the same mindset that the Taliban are working with, the possibility of taking over a country, and they don't for one second think it's not impossible. They just need to to compromise, and they will take over anything they want to take over. So. The question we must ask ourselves is this. All the buildings that people built in Afghanistan in 20 years, many of them are asked to run away and abandon it. You need to check about check up Syria, places like Aleppo, places like um, what's, what's that place? You see high-rise buildings that have been turned to nothing. Or Somalia. Or oh, Mogadishu, all these, all these funny, all these places. How people can just go from, I mean, Libya is another classic example, a prosperous state that Nigerians wanted to live in. You remember now, and it has descended into an arms and slavery zone. I'm saying this is because a lot of us put a lot of confidence in this world, a lot of confidence. Ah, Lagos, nothing, nothing, nothing. It can become nothing. Do you know what I said? Do you know what I said? Ah, oh, banana island. Ah, oh, lucky. I have land everywhere. It can become nothing. I'm not saying it will. I'm not prophet of doom. But I'm saying it can become nothing. A misstep at the top of power in this country can lead us into the hands of an extremist takeover. And when this people take over, everything you think you own. Everything we think we own in the banks that we're storing up there can become nothing. You remember what happened to uh, what's it called Greece? When the Greece is it Greece? Yes, Greece now they were owing uh, so much money. People could not withdraw any money from the banks. They've frozen all, of, all their accounts. Some people just mismanaged the economy, and not even on the streets could not go and withdraw money anymore. And the value of the money was just dropping. These examples are all over the world. We're not saying that it's, uh, it's going to be our fault. What we are saying is that let it not surprise you how the world, as we know it, can become nothing. I mean, look at Haiti. Do you know how many people that died in Haiti? Maybe we should check up the figures and check up how many people died in Haiti. You know, the one that, the one, that major one that even happened. Yeah, I, know and I know that that, that one is going into, into thousands already again. They did not ask for all these things, but it happened to them. 
Let us live our lives in the consciousness that there is a better place coming for us. And that better place, now is the time to secure it. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your for the grace you have given unto us to know these things. Lord, we are not unaware of the desperate move by darkness to keep our eyes focused here on earth. But we pray that according to your word, through our faith, you will keep us until the day that we receive the salvation in the name of Jesus. We believe it in your word that you are looking out for us. That you are looking out for us. And that's why you are bringing these matters to our remembrance in this season. Lord, help us to deepen this knowledge in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. And for everyone who is on the fence, who is trying to make up his mind whether or not he needs to invest, he needs to be rich towards God, I pray for them. That may the, may the end not catch them unawares in the mighty name of Jesus. Even for us all too, I pray, Lord, that may the end not catch us unawares in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, please give unto us all it takes to be custodians of this knowledge so that we can pass it on to our children if this world tarries in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.